Welcome everybody at another episode of the Wrestling vs. the World podcast. We're all enjoying your day, sweet if not what the hell ever. Episode 196. It is time to cover Trish Stratus' historic 2000 to 2006 WWE run. So her debut from as valet up until her initial retirement from full-time in-ring competition. It's not including the part-time appearances and the recent run within WWE. So it's going to be the six-year period. So on the March 19, 2000 episode of Sunday Night Heat, Trish Stratus would make her on-screen debut with the World Wrestling Federation as a valet, and right afterwards would become the manager of Test and Prince Albert, forming the TNA Tag Team. Now Trish would, during her time, would also take her very first big bump, very early in her WWF career, when she was driven through a table by Bubba Ray Dudley at the Backlash pay-per-view that same year, a pay-per-view I've already covered on the podcast, and her first ever match would see herself in a six-person intergender tag team match when herself and TNA took on Team Extreme being the Hardy Boys and Lita on the June 22, 2000 episode of SmackDown, which Triss would win after pinning Lita after interference by Prince Albert behind the referee's back. Now, as the summer went along, Trish would also start managing Sean Morley. I'm going to refer to him as that, not by his in-ring name, because screw him. During his time as Intercontinental Champion, where he'd also change his appearance and everything like that, only for the Alliance to be short-lived after SummerSlam, because at the pay-per-view itself, China and Eddie Guerrero would defeat Sean Morley and Trish Stratus, with China pinning Trish to give China the Intercontinental Championship. So, another alliance would this alliance would just be very short-lived. Then Trish would get her very first shot at the women's championship as she took on Lita in a bra and panties match on the October 23rd, 2000 episode of Raw, but failed to win the championship. By the end of the year, the TNA tag team was disbanded, and Trish would move into an on-screen relationship with Vince McMahon, as well as doing stuff that was sketchy with Triple H and getting into a feud with Stephanie McMahon, because she's pissed off saying, oh, you're my daddy's hoe bag, and all that other shit. So both men, women would end up facing each other in a singles match in No Way Out, which was actually better than expected, with Stephanie getting the win after William Regal got involved in the match and cost Trish the victory. Then Trish's on-screen romance with Vince would start to become more turbulent, with Vince becoming more abusive, and included the infamous Bark Like a Dog segment on Raw, which everybody won't stop bringing up. Like, we get it, it happened, okay? So then the on-screen romance would fi- officially come to an end at WrestleMania 17, where Trish got involved in Vince's street fight with his son Shane, slapping him in the face and turning into a baby face as a result. Now, following WrestleMania, we would see the Invasion storyline also start to commence, with Trish staying on the side of the WWF and also forming an alliance with her now former enemy, Lita, in a whole thing going against WCW-ECW alliance. Also, an on-screen romance with Jeff Hardy was starting to be teased around this time, but ultimately it never happened. Won't be the first time, we'll cover that a bit later on. Between Now, it was also recorded that between July and October, Trish would not have any matches, supposedly due to injury, and to also stay relevant and keep her busy, she would also take part in co-hosting WWF Excess. I'm sure nobody remembers that show, unfortunately. Then, by the fall, as, summer, as Survivor Series approached, the WWF Women's Championship had become vacant after last being seen with China at Judgment Day back in May of that year, with China at this point no longer being with the company, so we were reminded, saying, hey, the Women's Championship is actually still around, we're going to crown a new champion at Survivor Series. So a six-pack challenge will be booked for Survivor Series. Trish Stratus, Lita... Jazz, Ivory, Mighty Molly, and Jacqueline, which Trish would win to win the Women's Championship for the very first time in her career. Now, after successful title defenses at Vengeance against Jacqueline, and as well as Jazz at the Royal Rumble, Trish would lose her Women's Championship to Jazz on the February 4, 2002 episode of Raw, and would also fail to regain the Women's Championship in a triple threat match with Lita against Jazz at WrestleMania 18 in her hometown of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Trish, during, all th- during this time, would also get drafted exclusively to try to be on Monday Night Raw during the brand extension, and would also win the Women's Championship back in a mixed tag team match with Bubba Ray Dudley against Stevie Richards and Jazz on the May 13, 2002 episode of Raw. Now, she would also, Trish would also later, like shortly thereafter, defend the Women's Championship against Stacey Keebler in a bra and panties match on the debut episode of Velocity on May 25, 2002. Now, the weird thing is, something that I don't think a lot of people know, is that despite the brand split, saying that she had to appear exclusively on Raw because of this, she would also actually have a match on SmackDown a little bit after this, as she would team with Linda Miles, later known as, uh, she was that valet for the Basham Brothers. I know she had a bad attitude, Ken, uh, Shaniqua, that's what it was. 
against Ivory and Jackie Gata on the June 13, 2002 episode of SmackDown, with Trish and Linda becoming victorious. Now, Trish's second run as Women's Champion would then shortly after, end after this at King of the Ring, where she would lose the championship to Molly Holly. Then we would get the quote, infamous quote-unquote That Jackie Gata match. On July 8, 2002 episode of Raw, mixed tag match which just went horribly wrong, Trish and Bradshaw, Bradshaw would defeat Jackie Gata and Christopher Nowinski. You don't need to see that match if you've never seen it. It's bowling shoe ugly. Now around this time we would also see Victoria, who we previously saw as one of the Godfather's hoags, get repackaged as a spurned enemy of Trish Stratus, who she on screen said that she had history with and their days as the modeling and all that stuff. So Victoria would become a new on-screen character during all this time. Trish would then also regain the Women's Championship for her to begin her third reign at Unforgiven by defeating Molly Holly. And then after retaining the championship at No Mercy against Victoria, she would then lose the championship to Victoria at Survivor Series in a hardcore match. It's actually very solid. Trish would then, as 2003 began, Trish would continually try to regain the championship for Victoria, but to no avail. Then, WWE would also try to revisit the romance storyline between Jeff Hardy and Trish Stratus, which they teased a couple years prior, only to be scrapped after Jeff was released by the WWE in April for various reasons. So, two instances in two years where they tried something between Jeff and Trish ultimately never happened. Now, at WrestleMania 19, we would get another triple threat match for the Women's Championship. Trish would defeat Jazz and Victoria in this triple threat to become a four-time Women's Champion. Another solid match. But Trish's fourth run would be very short-lived as she would lose the title in her first pay-per-view title defense at Backlash going in a singles match against Jazz, who would be accompanied by Teddy Long during the whole thuggin' and buggin' shtick that was going on there. After, then after this, Trish would continually fail to regain the Women's Championship and also have a storyline with Gail Kim and Lita and a forming an alliance and stuff like that. Then she would get into an on-screen romance with Chris Jericho. Now, on screen, in the storyline, Chris Jericho and Christian had a bet with the stake of being one Canadian dollar to see who can sleep with their chosen woman first, Chris Jericho with Trish or Christian with Lita. Unfortunately, the women would then overhear the bet backstage and would be spurned by the men that were trying to get sex, try to trade this sexual bet for one Canadian dollar. We would get a tag team match later on at Armageddon with the, in a quote-unquote battle of the sexes where Chris Jericho and Christian would defeat Trish Stratus and Lita in the tag team match after Christian rolled up Trish. Now, despite this whole thing starting his bed, Jericho would start to show remorse for his old actions and start to turn babyface as 2004 began, would try to seek forgiveness from Trish, which would then also cause his tag team with Christian to dissolve. So then, WrestleMania 20, Christian would go one-on-one -on -one with Chris Jericho, which Christian would win after Trish accidentally elbowed Jericho in the face to cost him the match. Post-match? Trish would turn heel by attacking Chris Jericho and aligning herself with Christian. So Trish would be a heel for the first time in about three years. So then after this, Trish would align with Christian and would also gain Tyson Tomko as a teammate during the feud with Chris Jericho, but both of these alliances for Trish would end up dissolving as Christian in May of 2004 would suffer a back injury in a steel cage match against Chris Jericho on an episode of Raw, and then afterwards would also slowly dissolve her alliance with Tyson Tomko. Now Trish would then also become a five-time Women's Champion by winning a fatal four-way match at Bad Blood against uh, Champion Victoria and fellow challengers Gail Kim and Lita, which was originally just Gail Kim and Lita in Victoria in a one-on-one -on -one match for the title. Then Trish would restart her feud yet again with Lita, which involved Trish mocking Lita for both her pregnancy and forced marriage with Kane. So then after Lita lost a child, both women would face each other in a match at Survivor Series, which ended in short order, of order via disqualification. Trish would then also later on lose her Women's Championship to Lita on the December 6, 2004 episode of Raw in the main event. Not the first time this has happened, but it was one of those rare times where the women main evented the show. So Lita would dethrone Trish Stratus in the main event of Raw, only for Trish to then regain it at the start to begin her sixth reign as champion at New Year's Revolution 2005 after Lita during the match suffered a legit left ACL injury during the encounter. So then, after this, Trish would, it's rumored that Trish was supposed to go against Lita for WrestleMania 21, but due to the injury, they had to change plans, which then involved Trish going against 2005 Diva Search winner Christy Hemi going into WrestleMania, who was getting trained by Lita, and Trish would end up retaining her championship against Christy. Now, following an attack at Backlash by Viscera, Trish would then disappear from television due to injury for the next four months, which completely went against this whole 30-day tile defense rule, which I've discussed on the podcast as well. So, despite her being off television for the next four months, she would keep the championship this entire time with no explanation. 
Trish will make her return to television on the September 12, 2005 edition of Raw as a babyface, aligning herself with Ashley Massaro in her feud with Candice Michelle, Tori Wilson, and Victoria. Sometimes they're known as the Ladies in Pink, other times Vince's Little Devils. No set name there. Then also as 2005 came to a conclusion, Trish would feud with Melina and would end up retaining her championship against Melina at Survivor Series. Then we get one of the biggest feuds that everybody still remembers and probably gets hard to to this day, which involved the on-screen debut of Mickey James, who was presented as this psychotic, obsessed fan with Trish Stratus, which had some lesbian type of ang moments in there. Both women would also face each other at New Year's Revolution in a singles match for the title, where Trish would retain, and then the feud would take another step where, Tr where Mickey would turn heel by attacking Trish on the March 18, 2006 edition of Saturday Night's main event after a tag team match together where Trish refused, refused any further advances by Mickey, so Mickey went crazy and decided to attack her idol. So then both women would face each other yet again at WrestleMania 22 where Mickey would defeat Trish to become the new women's champion and would end up ending Trish's title reign at 448 days, which is the longest reign for this championship since Rock and Robin's reign that she had, that which lasted 502 days from October 1988 until the title was deactivated in February of 1990. Then Trish would get a rematch for the title at Backlash, which would end via disqualification, and during this match, Trish would get dumped over the top rope to the floor, landing awkwardly with her arm, with her arm and shoulder twisting on the apron and causing her to suffer a shoulder injury, which would send her out of action for the next month and a half, but would still remain on television regardless. After returning in reaction and concluding her feud with Mickey, Trish would enter an on-screen romance with Carlito, so another romance angle here, and would move into a feud with Edge and Lita, with the latter of the two becoming the women's champion during this period after winning the title from Mickey James. Now, as the summer started to conclude and the build to Unforgiven began, it was revealed that Trish was retiring from full-time in-ring action at Unforgiven in her hometown of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I know in interviews she has since revealed her reasons due to personal reasons making her decide to step away from the ring for good. Well, mostly for good. Trish would then face Lita one-on-one -on -one at the pay-per-view in the, for the Women's Championship and would defeat Lita with the Sharpshooter in Canada to win the Women's Championship for the record-setting seventh time, retiring as champion, and the title would be vacated again shortly thereafter. So, yeah. This was one wild six-year span. It, like, I know that Trish would, had to slowly work her way up to being bit better in the ring, especially when you compare to how she was at the start, and even, like, at the start of her career, and even at the beginning of her reigns as women's champion, but she stepped up. Like, she had a lot of watchable matches during a period where the women were just treated as eye candy. You want some examples? Triple Threat at WrestleMania 19, the singles match against Mickey at WrestleMania 22, very solid matches and stuff like that. The main event match against Lead On Dead episode of Raw at the end of 2004. It's like, as soon, once 2002 went into 2003, that's when it felt like she started to pick things up. I mean, even her hardcore match at Survivor Series against Victoria was very solid. It's, I know sometimes you would see these hardcore-esque matches with women, but usually they didn't involve a lot of quality. It was just, oh, let's throw weapons, but they did a solid job. So if I had to grade Trish's run as her time during the six-year period on a grade scale, I'd give her a solid A. Like I said, she improved. She had a lot of watchable matches, a lot of wild segments and romances and storylines going on during this period. And it's one of the reasons why she's like declared as one of the best women, like women's wrestlers ever. And a fun fact here that I didn't realize until years ago, her entrance music that she did with TNA is actually royalty-free music. I believe I got it on the website Audio Micro. I think I like I remember getting it from there and I heard the music and I was like, huh, that sounds familiar. Realize it is now royalty-free music. So, fun little tidbit there. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about Trish Stratus' time in WWE from her debut in March 2000 up until her retirement from full-time in-ring competition in September of 2006? If you enjoyed today's episode, folks, please remember to leave a like, subscribe to the bell, turn on when you're listening to this on YouTube, and also comment what you thought below, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for listening, folks. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, and good day, everybody.